This is actually sets of six firings. We're actually looking at that ripple. Uh, the ripple is also maybe noted on the um, on the nameplate as the form factor. Okay, so you see it's varying about 15 amps across time. This is in a loaded machine. Um, and here's the voltage down below, the notching. This is actually the notching that's occurring as the as the uh, SCRs are firing. What I should see in my frequency on the right-hand side here are several distinct peaks. One set of peaks will occur at the line frequency down all the way to the left. This peak here that's labeled SCR is the number of SCRs times the line frequency. So in a fully rectified system, it would be six SCRs times line, times line frequency, or 360 hertz in a, in a 60 hertz system. And you should see that dampen off across the entire spectrum, just like in this case. The sidebands that are occurring around that SCR frequency, that is what I would troubleshoot in order to determine what kind of problems I have, and that's outside the scope of this presentation. But I did want you to remember these two voltage and current waveforms. I come in here where you have your uh, pulses. in sets of six. A problem that I see quite a bit of is just a little bit different from that. Let's come down to number seven. Okay. I have two issues here. First off, in my demodulated spectrum, you can see a fairly high 60 hertz peak. If I add to that, I see a fairly high line frequency peak that I should not see on the uh, outboard side of the drive. And you'll also notice up at the top that I have about 60 amps of current. That's AC current flowing from the drive into the electric motor. Okay. In this particular case study, this, this motor had to be replaced um, had to be repaired three times over the past 18 months. If I come up to my line frequent, my high frequency data, the first thing, always stick with basics. You notice on the left hand side here, there's four peaks, nothing, four peaks, nothing. That literally means that one set of SCRs is not firing. You also see changes in the spectra on the right-hand side. Okay, in this particular case, when that type of thing occurs, either I have um, bad SCRs, plural, uh, loose connection, more than likely a bad firing card. So, ESA has come a long way for past. And I'm going to open this up again uh, for questions. So do I have any questions? Yes. The variation is extremely small and will actually be uh, seen in fractions of a thousandth of an inch. It doesn't take much because it's a square of the distance issue. You know, you're using the inverse square law. It only takes a little bit of movement from one side to the other. Now, um, a bearing beginning to fail, say fretting, for instance, uh, you may not see because you're looking at, again, fractions upon fractions of a thousandth of an inch until a bearing hits um, uh, a later stage where it's causing uh, some bouncing around and the rotor's actually flexing more. Okay. Any other questions? Yes.
Yes. A number of things could cause that. Um, one of those could be um, thermal expansion. If the frame, and, and, and you notice I went right to this because I've actually seen this before, uh, where the frame of the machine expands faster than the stator core. And um, it can cause some looseness, especially if you don't have a lot of welds or the welds are broken. Uh, I'd monitor it. If if you have seen no other conditions, um, normally unless it's a uh, unless you have a definite indication of say insulation failure in a motor or bearing failure in a motor, um, most of the time when I'm running into an issue with something that needs to be addressed immediately, there's more than one fault occurring. Um, for instance, the combustion fan uh, it had clogged uh, uh, a clogged cooling system. It had um, oil in the motor. It had fractured insulation. It had um, the long coils and everything else. All of that was adding up to a problem. Those machines lasted um, about seven years like that. Yes, and um, uh, if possible, uh, whenever the machine shuts down, just take a snapshot with motor circuit analysis um, and see if you're seeing any degradation in the insulation system, particularly insulation to ground. Because if it turns out that it is a loose coil, um, it will show up uh, an insulation to ground before it fails. Thank you. You're welcome. Any additional questions? If not, um, most of you have my email address and you'll also receive a form for me a little later just asking uh, what you thought of this and, and uh, how it looked at your end. Um, and I very, very much appreciate your time. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. Can you get the slides? What we will um, be doing uh, is this entire presentation, audio and visual, um, uh, if it converts over okay and I can set it up so it's streaming because it's going to be very large, uh, I'm going to have this available online and you'll, you'll be aware of it. Uh, all of this information I have also published in a number of documents. A lot of them are, uh, were when I was with Altest Pro. Um, some of them are a little newer, uh, but those can actually, those documents can actually be accessed through www.motordiagnostics.com. That's motor diagnostics, plural, all one word, slash presentations, plural, dot htm. So motordiagnostics.com slash presentations dot htm. And uh, there, there'll be a form to fill in, but I get I get those forms directly, and I don't share information. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, gentlemen, and uh, I look forward to.